I have found this to be true, that God provides help for every part of the journey. When I look back over my life, I see a long list of people who have encouraged and supported me and who have shown me that there is a way around every challenge. Some of them are particularly memorable because of the extent to which they impacted my life. People like my art teacher, Mr. Broadhurst, who was a very fascinating and somewhat frightening character. He had the most unruly forest of brown silver tipped hair that looked like the bristles of an African broom. I was convinced that a comb that could tame his unshorn forest was yet to be invented. His hair was in keeping with his character, for there was something very unconventional and rebellious about him. He grunted more than he spoke. All the children called him Butch behind his back. When I asked why, I was told that it had something to do with a resemblance to a bulldog. Well, I'm Chizo. I'm married to the most wonderful person. His name is Bajo. We have two delightful daughters, Risachi and Rina. I'm trained as a barrister in Nigeria and a solicitor in England and I practiced criminal law here in England for several years and um, as of three years ago I became the general manager at Jesus House and nine years ago I was ordained as a pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. I'm the middle child in a family of five children, two older brothers and two younger sisters. I was born at the start of the Nigerian Civil War. It was a difficult time. In the circumstances of my birth, my mother had a very difficult labor and it was in a war situation. As a result of the surrounding circumstances, I sustained a brachial plexus injury to my arm whilst I was being born. And that basically meant that the nerves to my arm were damaged. And as a result, I have very limited mobility to that arm. Um, some of those nerves were actually paralyzed. Yes, so I found myself um, growing up with a disability. That word disability actually was not a word I was familiar with. Um, it was never mentioned in our household. I had parents who encouraged me in every way. I was no different from anyone. In actual fact, I was a bit of a tomboy. I wanted to do everything that my older brothers were doing and I felt like for them to include me, I had to be just as tough as the boys around in the neighborhood. And so I kind of used to scoff at girly things. I always wore shorts and t-shirts and I was always in a tree somewhere, um, learning how to ride a bicycle at age four um, was one of my initial goals. I always wanted to be part of their football teams, but they never chose me unless they were short of players. And when they did choose me, I ended up as goalkeeper. And so it, it, it really didn't have any kind of impact on me. I think that where I started noticing some sort of difference was when I got into my teenage years. And I guess for a lot of girls, that's when there would be issues around self-image and of course, boys. And so you then realize that you are, um, in a sense, different, certainly, only in so much as, as you look. It didn't also help that I was extremely skinny, looked much younger than I was. And I think the challenges of growing up then were more around self-image, but never around um, sort of my confidence in myself. I had such a strong foundation of love and I was certainly cushioned by my family environment there was a lot of love around me. And I think that that's what gave me um, the confidence that I have today. But even with that, I know that it didn't shield me entirely from life. 
um, and suddenly my parents' love, my brother's protection didn't really, for me, extend into life outside. So home was great, um, but outside was, had its challenges. I think that in my adolescent years, I went through some very dark periods and being uh, part of a Christian family, I only knew to turn to Jesus. And so I would have long conversations with him. He made sense of where I found myself. Growing up, that has always been who I have leaned on through the various challenges, through life experiences. When we lost two children, we, ha we had a miscarriage and then we had a stillbirth. I was just doing what I knew to do and that was to lean on God. He made life fall into some sort of perspective for me. I know that God loves me, that I settled a long, long time ago. And so I face life, I face challenges with that as a backdrop, um, that if God loves me, it doesn't really matter what I go through, I'll be okay. And that's what has helped me. Writing has always been something that I've done. Uh, I found myself writing my first book when I was eight and a half years old. It never saw the light of day. It was just an opportunity to express my thoughts. And I used to write letters to Jesus and I would write his reply back to me. And so I've always written. I've always kept journals. And so everything that happened to me is contained in a journal somewhere. When I went through the difficult periods as a young girl, I wrote about them and I thought initially that it might benefit someone somewhere. But that was an idea that I soon shelved because it obviously meant that I wasn't writing it for me and other people had to read it. And there I drew the line because I'm an extremely private person and I could not imagine the fact that my entire life would be on the pages of a book for everybody to read. I also thought that to write a biography, you need to have done something noteworthy. And I didn't consider my life to be of any interest to anyone. And so even though I had the idea to write this book well over 10 years ago. I managed to talk myself out of it. Um, so the book did exist in draft form, but I didn't do anything with it. In the years since, a lot obviously has happened, but what actually made me go ahead and complete it, so to speak, was a very interesting experience I had when um, a wonderful prophetess, a wonderful uh, minister of the gospel, was speaking to us in one of our staff meetings, 2014. And completely out of the blue, she turned to me and said, God wanted me to write that book and I had to complete it. And that startled me. That really was what gave me the push to actually complete it. And it was quite remarkable because I felt like I was on a conveyor belt and I couldn't stop and I couldn't get off. And I just felt like it was something I absolutely had to do. And I finished the book in less than two, three months after that. And that was in October of 2014. I'm not trying to convince anyone um, about anything. I'm simply telling my story. I'm sharing my experiences. I am telling of what has helped me and what causes me to look with hope to tomorrow, notwithstanding challenges. Whoever it is who reads the book and is perhaps in a dark place, I'm wanting to say to them that tomorrow will be all right. It's not over and life is good. There's always a reason to be thankful. There's so much that one can do. It really doesn't matter the circumstances that you face. Every life has meaning. Every life has a purpose. Everyone. It really doesn't matter what state you're in. There's a reason, there's a purpose, and 
yeah, there's hope. One of the things that bothered me um, growing up was the fact that I didn't see any role models, disabled role models, in mainstream society in Nigeria where I grew up. It always concerned me. Um, the only disabled people I saw were children in two schools for the visually impaired and for the hearing impaired. They were one category of disabled people that I saw and the next ones were beggars who were trying to survive on the streets by begging. And I was curious as to why that was. And I guess as an adult, I realized that there was and still is such a terrible stigma around disability. It's something that's hidden away. There's a lot of shame around it. And um, I don't know what form it's going to take, but I know that it's something that I have to start to talk about as a beginning, you know, begin those conversations which are difficult and I suppose they're conversations that people have shied away from for so long and I think we have to start talking about it and we have to do something about it. I happen to have had tremendous opportunity but I know that there are other people who didn't have the opportunities that I did but whose lives could have amounted to something and because they were never given the chance, because perhaps they didn't have the financial stability, or perhaps they weren't in families where they could have received support, then they didn't do anything with their lives. Um, and, and that makes me sad. And so I know that in some form, I have to do something. I also have to do something for the countless young girls who are told, you know, that they can't have, for want of a better word, normal lives simply because they're living with a disability, simply because it's something that's not accepted in the African society. Young girls who are told that they could, for instance, never get married, raise children, never amount to much, never have careers. I think I have to be that voice for the people who either don't have a voice or don't have a voice that carries weight. And so I really don't know how that's going to sort of pan out, but I know that it's something that I will be dedicating some of my time to. I really don't know what form it will take, but yeah, it's something I'll be doing.